Hi there, Dominic here. And in this video, I'm going to share with you a tool that I've recently discovered that enables me to do simple manipulation of the image. And I don't really use Photoshop at all because I'm not professionally trained in that. Used it before, but I just find that there's a lot of stuff that I don't use on a common basis, enough for me to go and buy the software. And so I've discovered this free tool, it's called Pixlr, which I'm really excited to share with you and how it works as well. Now I can't really do a uh, Apple to Apple comparison between what Pixlr can do, and I hope I pronounced the name properly, versus what Photoshop can do because like I said, I don't really use Photoshop. I usually just outsource it and get someone to get it done. But what if on a day-to-day -day basis, you have simple things that you really want to change that you think you could do it on your own and you really don't want to, number one, spend money on, and number two, wait a couple of days for the designer to get it done for you. Now then, this is where the tool comes in for me. So over here, what I can do is once I get to this website, pixlr.com, I'll just click on advanced pixel E. I'm not too sure what that means, but I'll just use that, okay? So over here, you'll notice that, first of all, it has like a workspace for you, which stores the history and history of, a history of all the projects, design projects that you have done before over here. And you can see I've used it literally to design simple logos over here, which is just text. So for today, I want to change my, my wallpaper, really because I've gotten professional help to design a nice looking logo when it's no longer just dominictay.com. It just has a nicer logo. <laughs> I wouldn't say like it's the best, but it's just nicer than what I have originally. So what I can do is I can just click on create new. And over here, I just specify the project title. Let's call it laptop wallpaper, wallpaper new. Okay, yay. Then I can change the width and the height to the one that I want. So at this point in time, I've taken a look at my computer and this is the width and this is the height. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it over here. And okay, so I'm done with this. And the reason why I like to have a wallpaper like this is really because I like to have my screen over here when I'm doing coaching, when I'm doing private consult, I like to have my screen over here and my image over here, like a video of me over here when I'm sharing with them, like during a Zoom meeting or when I'm doing webinar using Webinar Jam, all these webinar softwares, which we'll get to that later on. Then I like to have my videos over here. And so I usually just use this part of the screen to present. So whatever I'm presenting, this never covered by the video that I have, okay? I like to do it that way. Now, so I'll go on to click on the create button and you can notice that the workspace is very similar. I've seen before people use Photoshop, it's very similar to that. So on the left hand side, you get to see all the tools and the functions that comes together with this free software and whatever that you're not too sure about, like what it does, how it can help you, you just hover it over. You just hover your mouse over, your cursor over and it gives you a brief description of what it does. And on on this right hand side of the screen, you get to see the layers. The only drawback that I've noticed is that you're not able to manipulate multiple layers at one go. So in short, you cannot go and take all the, let's say you have three different layers. You have one layer for like a background. Then you've got a second layer, like over here, you've got a black background and you've got your image of you over here. And then you have a text all together. That's three layers, right? One layer for background, one layer for your image, another layer for text. You are not able to resize them together. You can't manipulate multiple layers at one go, which I've seen before people doing it on Photoshop and other softwares that they use as well. Um, you can't seem to be able to do that on Pixel. So the only way is you gotta flatten the image first, then you can manipulate them as just one single layer. And then you manipulate from there. Okay, you can resize it, do whatever you like. So I'm just gonna import my current wallpaper over here because I've already calculated the dimensions sufficient for my presentations to appear really nice as well on my screen. So I'm just gonna go ahead to import my current image. So once I click on this add layer, which is a plus button, they will present to you three choices. Either an empty layer, which you can do anything you want from here, like add an empty, empty color or a solid color to an empty space, or you could add your own image or you can add text. Now we'll talk about text later on, but for image, once you click on it, they will allow you to upload your own image. So I'm just gonna go ahead to upload the image that I have. Okay, so I've gotten it loaded over here. And then what I can do now is I can then load in my image of me sitting over here. 
All right, there we go. And then later on, I can also load in the image of my logo, which I've professionally gotten it designed. Okay, so as you can see, I've got multiple layers over here and I can begin to manipulate them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this image of me and I'm gonna do my best to resize it back to the size that it originally was or the originally intended size. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it here. Uh, it's not gonna be perfect, but that's fine as long as it works. Uh, one of the most important business lessons that I've learned is that you, you can't get perfect. So what you can do is you can only get started, right? Just make it functional, it doesn't have to be perfect, just make it functional. Okay, so I'm done with that. And then now I'm gonna take this logo that I have, then I'm gonna take it and place it over here and resize it. As you can see, like I said, it's good for simple manipulation. Nothing fancy -ful. Then now I can begin to hide my original wallpaper layer so I can see how it looks like. Now I can also go to my layer one and then I can use the fill function to fill up the entire space in black, like what it originally looked like. And there we go, I'm already done. So of course I can go ahead to manipulate the image even further and I could even go ahead to add in text. Now the challenge with using text over here, if you click on add text, add a new layer, is that they come preset with only one, two, three, four, five, five of the commonly used fonts, which don't look really nice when you're doing design works. And the challenge with many of the other fonts over here, they are really fonts that I've quite frankly not seen before. They are not the very popular ones that you can find on Google fonts, you know? So if you want to use Google fonts like Roboto, which I've seen it on Google fonts, I don't know if Google owns it. What you can do is you can go download it somewhere. Make sure it's okay for commercial use first. Then you can then use this function called add local font to upload that font to this platform, then you can use it, okay? So this is a free tool. And personally for me, as long as you don't or I don't go and delete away the history of the, the browser, the fonts will always be there anyway. So I'll just leave it as it is, okay? And that's sufficient for my use again. So you gotta decide if it's okay for you, enough for you or not. This tool comes together with a lot of the other functions, like for example, you know, you can auto adjust the image, okay? And I don't want to because it just made me look really red. And then what I do over here is I would then change the visibility back, okay? So there's a history over here as well. Oh, and by the way, if you wanted to, you could also use the functions that they have to manipulate the image even further. But let's say in this case, because I'm wearing black jacket and the background is black as well. So I want to create a little bit of an outer glow right, or an outline. I'm not too sure what's the two difference, but I'm just gonna play around with the settings. Okay, so let's say I reduce the size even further. So it just creates a small little contrast. I don't blend into the background and I think that's good enough, okay? Okay, great. So I think this is sufficient for my use. All right, so what I can do now is I can just go ahead to save and rather export the file. I can either export it as JPEG JPEG means that there is no transparent effects at all. So if you want to have a transparent background and you want to then later on like, like what I have for my this image, right? Let's say I disable the background. You want yourself or an image of you to be just floating around, then you gotta export it as a PNG file instead. So you just go to save and then you put PNG, which automatically they will do it for you. They will suggest it to you by selecting this first rather than JPEG. Because if you use JPEG, everything just becomes white background. Use JPEG and then of course everything else you get to export with the transparent background. So WebP, I'm not too sure what it does, never used it before. But PXD file is the file that I always save a copy of on my hard disk, really because it allows me to later on import it back to this system, this pixeler, and then later on I can then adjust the different layers. If I were to import the, the file PNG again, I cannot make any changes to the different layers because they are all merged together. So then I can download the JPEG file and I can decide the quality. I'm just gonna leave it at 90% and I'm just gonna download the file. Okay, and then now I could open it up. All right, and then I can now, I'll show you the before, before is this, okay, what you see over here, 
and then now I can right click I click on save as or rather set as set as background and this is the after Ta da okay so it just makes me look a little bit bigger more gigantic so if I wanted to I can manipulate the image even further to reduce the size okay so there we have it already done with this simple task this is a platform that I like like I said it's free and it enables me to do a lot of image manipulation on my own just a simple kind all right so if you like to see a lot more of the tools, if you like to learn more of the tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis as a non-designer, as a non-technical person, then subscribe to my channel and make sure you click on the like button as well. See you in the next video.